Hey everyone, I'm Mason Egger and welcome to BSD Synergy. This week's episode is titled The Magic, VPN over SSH. First things first, I want to apologize for the delay. Um, if you didn't notice, I didn't upload a video last week. Um, in between being very, very busy at work and working a lot of overtime and coming down with some sort of allergy thing that made me just bleh, um, I, I just couldn't put out a video. That being said, I am really busy at work lately, which I know is no excuse, but hey, when you end up working a lot of overtime, it makes it difficult to do these videos. And also, I'm doing a lot of new topics now. Um, I've kind of ventured out of the realm of things that I know very, very well, and now am trying to learn things so that I can teach them on this channel. So it's kind of a big learning process for me and for you that tune in to watch. So more delays may come. I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure that I never miss a week again. However, stuff does happen. If you want to know what's going on, follow me on Twitter. Uh, last week I did tweet out that this week's uh, that last week's episode was going to be delayed. So if you're really interested and you know you don't see my videos, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm really trying to record the videos before Monday now, <laughs> which uh, would help. And then what I'm doing is I'm scheduling them on YouTube for a certain time of the day. I tried five o'clock on Monday last week, but I don't end up liking that one because it's really like at the end of the day and most people probably don't want to watch a BSD video at the beginning of the day. I'm thinking, and from my experience, I get in on Monday morning, it takes a while to get going, maybe a BSD video would help. So I'm going to try to aim for 8 a.m. Central Time releases on Monday mornings for my videos. If you don't see one by then, check Twitter. Um, my handle's at Zelgius with a three where the E should be. It's I, I'll link it below. It's, it's hard to spell. Um, and if you don't see a tweet from me, you can assume that it's still coming, but I will definitely try to get it out knowing, hey, there is a video, I'm, I'm running behind, or no, there's not a video this week. Uh, also, whenever YouTube uploads my videos, it automatically tweets out for me saying, hey, the video is there. So once it does release, and if you follow me on Twitter, you will see that the video is there. Okay, so VPN over SSH. Um, this is probably one of the most complex things you can do with an open SSH server. And in reality, it's not ideal. It has it is missing many functions that a normal VPN would have. It doesn't even work across PuTTY. So sorry, Windows users. Uh, the PuTTY developers flat out refuse to support this. But what it is, what what S what VPN over an SSH is, is it's a quick and dirty solution. It's meant for low amounts of traffic, and it really only uses one TCP connection. So. You really can't set one up and let everybody onto it because you have one connection and everybody's traffic is going through one connection. That's just not going to work. So first things first, what is a VPN? Uh, a VPN is a virtual private network. Oh, there, hence the VPN. It is a private network that extends across a public network or the internet. Um, it enables users to send and receive data across shared or public networks as if their computers were directly plugged into them. So imagine, you know, I want to access machines with on my LAN at home out from the outside, you would use a VPN for that. A lot of corporations use this for remote access. I go through a VPN if I need to access my dev boxes uh, from home. So it's very common. So let me go over the test network that I'm using for this. So let me go over the test network that I'm using for the demo today. Um, they're all on DigitalOcean. Uh, they're FreeBSD based. It's all FreeBSD uh, 10.3. They all have the private network enabled. The DigitalOcean private network allows communications between VMs in the same data center. That's important. They have to be in the same data center. My VMs, since I didn't want them talking to each other across the private network in the same data center, but I needed a private network, I put them on opposite ends of the country. One of them is in New York and one of them is in San Francisco. I cannot normally access the private network interface of my VM. And as I said, these are free BSD, so I'm gonna be generic as possible in explaining the things you need to do, but the commands that you're going to see are likely to be free BSD only commands. So if you're not running a free BSD to free BSD system, you will have to figure out how to run these commands. They're very generic sysadmin commands. So it's not like you'll never have seen them before. It's just that you won't be able to copy pasta from me to the you. So there's a lot of things you have to configure to make this work. Um, and we're gonna start with the server side. Okay, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use the permit tunnel command inside SSH. So 
So permit tunnel point to point. There are four permit tunnel options that can be used. Um, yes, no, point to point, or ethernet. Yes means accept anything, no means accept nothing. Point to point uh, creates a virtual private circuit that runs from one point to another, basically. Um, you must also configure routing for this to be useful. You'll have no routing in point to point. There's also ethernet. Um, the ethernet per, uh, permit tunnel transmits layer two traffic. Um, do not use it if you can absolutely avoid it. Um, LAN problems on one side will propagate themselves across the link and saturate your external bandwidth. And in reality, configuring routing is trivial compared to trying to debug ethernet broadcast problems from across the country or remotely. The other thing you'll need is you will need to create a tunnel interface. And as you can see, there's ton zero down here in the bottom. Uh, a tunnel interface is basically just a virtual interface that sits on top of another network interface. This is how VPNs talk. If you need to know how to create one, it's basically on FreeBSD and most of your Linux systems. I have config ton zero create will suffice for what we're trying to do here. Um, if you want it to persist after reboot, you'll have to set that up yourself. Either in if you're doing it on Linux and your uh, you know network scripts, system, and then in FreeBSD you can set it in your RC uh, your rc.conf. Another thing you'll have to do is you'll have to enable IP forwarding. This kind of fixes the routing problem that we were talking about. Um, basically, it turns your box into a router. Your server it also forwards IP packets out and routes them because both sides must be forwarding packets from one interface to another. So I'm gonna show it to you on the server side, but you have to remember you also need to do it on the client side. So the way you would do that is sysctlnet.inet.ip.forwarding equals one. Forwarding, must spell it right. And if you want it to persist after a reboot. Um, the quickest way to do it, you can either manually edit your uh, etsy rc.conf or you can just do sysrc gateway enable equals yes. And I already had it set. Now the other thing you'll need to do is you'll need to permit root login and use key auth. You should definitely use key auth for this. And actually you kind of have to for how we set this up. And for, for the sake of this tutorial, you must use key auth. So, Basically, if you didn't see it already in the SSH config, because it was there right on top of it, you have permit, permit root login and you do without dash password. That will only allow key auth on your root. Now this key should not be your main key. Really and truly, you should create an entirely separate key for this. Uh, just for the VPN purposes, because if the intruder gets access to this key, they then have root access on your machine. Um, if you use it only for the VPN, uh, in reality, the worst thing they'll be able to do is they'll be able to get onto your private network and they'll have a VPN into your network. Now that's still bad, but not quite as bad as having root access on a server. Okay, and then this is the part that's pretty interesting, I think. In your authorized keys, this is the key for my client to my server and it's the VPN key only. If you will notice, it looks a little bit different up here at the top. This is actually the beginning of the key. These are commands that we can force that whenever the key logs in, it does this and only this. So basically what it does is it will run tunnel zero. It will run a command, tunnel server.sh, which we'll get to in a second. It's a, it's a shell script we have to write. Uh, it allows for no port forwarding, no 11, no PTY, no user RC, no agent 40. Basically, they can only set up this tunnel and that's it. And that's where, if we're only using the key, that's where the protection comes in. So if you didn't do this, um, well, if you didn't do the tunnel, it wouldn't work. But then that key would have more power than it really does. And in reality, this key only has tunnel creating powers. So it's pretty nifty. I don't think I never went over setting commands in the authorized keys in some of my previous ones, previous videos, but it's definitely a cool thing and you sh now you know. And now basically the last thing we have to do is we have to set up that script that whenever you log in, the authorized key executes the commands and runs it. So it's called tunnelserver.sh and basically we need to give our tunnel interface an IP address 
and we need to add a route of the private network on our client machine. So this 10.134.0.0 is the I, is the client is the ver private network on my client machine. If you put your server IP address here, like I currently have ifconfig vtnet1 is my, this is my internal network. If you set it to 10.132 inside that script, gonna break, you know, your overwrite routes. That was, honestly, that was the biggest mistake I made is I, I mixed up my subnets and did the wrong thing. So you have the, and I, I guess I'll reiterate this because it is very important, the private network of the client. So that way you can forward, forward your packets. And then just give it an IP address. This is also the IP address of your tunnel. So if you want to know the command for creating the tunnel, it's just sh-i key file dash f dash w client tunnel number. Notice how there's no space. They have to be right on top of each other. Colon server tunnel number server name true. So let's go over these commands. The dash i, it's the identity file, so it's the key file you're using. The dash f makes it run in the background. Um, we run true because you have to, when you execute a dash f, you have to execute a command. So the dash f will run true, and then it will just push this SSH session into the background, and you'll get your console back on your local machine. And you really want to do this because if you didn't do the dash f, you would open it up and then you'd have to leave that console open and you have a random root powered console. The dash w tells the client to request a tunnel and the device numbers to request on. But we're not going to do that. That's a lot of stuff to remember and do. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit our handy dandy SSH config. So Inside the SSH config, you do your host. I have it set up in my Etsy host file to find VPN1. Host name, you tell the tunnel yes. You tell it it's tunnel device 00. Permit local command allows you to run a command on your machine before you SSH in. And that actually does this tunnel client.sh, which will create the routes for us to use our VPN. The cool thing is, once this connection, this SSH connection is terminated, those routes disappear. Okay, and the last thing that you have to know to do on the client is the tunnel script, which I put in user local scripts, and it's tunnelclient.sh. And it looks almost identical to the server script, except over here, we have given it the server's uh, private network, and we've given it a different IP address. So this one is dot one, and its gateway is, you know, 02. So, that's the, really the only difference. You could really copy and paste them, and as long as you modify those few things, you'll be fine. So now for our actual practical demo. I've shown you all the things to do to set up, but this is actually the practical demo. So if I do a C URL on VTNet1, which is 10.132.85.127, there is an Apache server running that just says it works. It's the basic default. But you can see that that's there. If we try to ex, uh, access this externally, I have Apache only listening on this internal address. So if I try to do the same thing over on the other side, we're gonna do a copy paste because I can I never remember these dang IP addresses. It doesn't work because it's not there. It has no access to it. So I have all of this stuff set up, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an SSH-F for background vpn1 and then true that's all i have to do since i set up my config thing properly okay so it tells me that i've added these routes which is good you can just hit enter and you get your client back if i do a ps aux grep ssh you'll see over here that it is running in the background that client connection is still there and if i run the the curl command I get it because I VPNed in. I just have created an SSH VPN. And now to actually see the uh, the routes, so that's actually the cool thing. Netstat dash R. Okay, so I have to make I make the screen a little bit smaller so you can actually see all the routes. So as you can see from our route right here, this is the route that gets us in to the other place. Isn't that pretty cool? Basically, the gateway is set to the tunnel interface right here and this pri this is the private network on the on the SSH server where the actual web page is being hosted and now if i kill the connection and do a net stat again the route is magically gone pretty cool huh 
So the only weird thing is right now I can't access the internal network of my server. So like I can get to the server's address, but if I want anybody else in that network, which I can normally access from the server, I can't get to. Um, I haven't spent too much time debugging this, mostly because I didn't build that internal network. Uh, the weird thing that I found about DigitalOcean's servers is that I put them on the internal network. Not only can I access my servers, but I can access everybody's servers across the internal network there. At least I can ping them and I can't ping them from this side. So I'm going to assume that they've made some firewall restrictions or they have something to stop a VPN getting in and then accessing the internal network of of their system. Because basically it's every server on that subnet that you could access. I can ping every single person on that server from my box. So going to assume that there's something there that stops me. I Since I didn't build the internal network, I didn't delve that much into it. Maybe I made a mistake. It's very possible. I could have forgotten something. But I'm really not that concerned about it. I think I proved the point that you can make a VPN, and it's pretty awesome. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, first things first, I want to give a huge shout-out to Michael W. Lucas. Thank you for these awesome books. Um, everything I've done for the past three videos has pretty much come straight from these books. Uh, if you liked what I've done, you like the really cool things that I've covered, go check him out. You know, his books are funny and they're they're interesting to read. Um, he has jokes in them. They're interesting. They cover a wide variety of topics and they, they don't assume that you're, you know, this is where the power button is. So it does really help. So it doesn't make you feel dumb in the process. So some things to be up. So some things upcoming for the channel. Um, I am working on a website for where I'm going to actually be posting tutorials and transcripts of the shows. Um, you can typically expect to see the transcripts and stuff go up about a week after the video does, um, just because it takes me a while to translate the random crap that spews out of my mouth's mouth that isn't on the notes into, you know, actual readable things. The videos themselves won't be embedded, uh, mostly because I, and I don't know if they've changed it, but in an embedded player, I don't get views and views are kind of what drives the ad revenue, which I am donating back to uh, the communities. And if there's no views, there's no money, there's no money for the community. So, eh. Um, one of the things that some people have asked me for, which I, I'm grateful for, but I think is, you know, I did never ask for it. I don't expect it of you is some people want to send me a, a couple of dollars here and there as a thank you for doing the show because they enjoy it. Um, I'll be setting up a PayPal to make that easier for y'all. Uh, that You can probably expect that to be ready by next week. Um, I really wasn't anticipating needing to do that. And I, I appreciate those of you that want to. If you watch the show, don't feel like you need to. Um, but I will do it because, you know, it's, it, it's nice of you. And it'll help me make the show better. You know, I know the lighting isn't the greatest for the show. So, you know, maybe I'll be able to get some actual, like, studio lighting or something with this kind of thing to, you know help make the show better. Um, next week, you can look forward to an OpenBSD router-based uh, show. That's going to be a lot of fun. Actually, the people at uh, BSD Now have done that previously. It was like one of the first episodes they did, and I, I watched that episode. So um, I'm gonna, it's kind of going to be more of an updated version, and it's going to be fun. It's all OpenBSD-based, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's honestly one of my favorite things to do with OpenBSD is to build a router out of it. Um, so if you like this video, go ahead and leave me a like. If you want to come back and see me again next week, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any comments whatsoever, show suggestions, lighting suggestions, just life tips in general, maybe you have a, some sage wisdom you wish to pass along to me, feel free to drop it in the comments below or send me a private message if you don't want to leave it in the comments. I've been getting a lot of those lately and I do appreciate them. Um, and, you know, just keep in touch. Let me know what you want as a community and I will do my best to deliver. So thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you next week.